welcome to Crafty Leagues. Hello. Um, we are doing a few videos now over St. David's Day weekend, which is on Friday. Um, I think this, I'm not sure this either the first or second one that's going to go up. We're going to paint some rocks today. Really that poo. Yeah, so anyway, today we're going to do some rock painting. Not these particular ones, these are the ones I've done before. But we're going to go for a walk tomorrow um, and we're going to tell you about something that was last Thursday, which is the anniversary of the French invasion. The French invasion Fishguard. was when like, the French invaded. Yeah. You'll see the story, <laughs> you will, and you'll see it in mosaics. Yeah. How bad that? Well, hopefully, as long as the weather's good. So anyway, Love we're going to paint good. stones well, must be good. at some point tomorrow. And if not, we'll go back the next day. At some point tomorrow, we're going to go for a walk. We're going to hide these stones. We're going to be going to the old fort. Yeah, we're going to go to the old fort and go to the beach, I think.
We are now just going to write on the back. Oh, can we just do this? We heated these up to dry the other side and they are boiling. Like, for instance, I just put that on, right? That blue one, it's not coming off. Yeah, it's not on yet. I've just done my hair. It's completely dry. So, we're going to the old fort. Mm -hmm. yeah. This says, the fort was built for privateer vessel Black Prince demanded £1,000 to return a captured local ship and a ransom for the town. When this was refused, it bombarded Fishgad, damaging St Mary's Church and some houses. As Fishgad was a prosperous port, protection was vital. The fort was completed in 1781 and eight nine-pounder guns manned by three invalid gunners from Woolwich. It became the headquarters of the Fishgad Fencibles. On 22nd of February 1797, an invading French force appeared off the coast. Alarm guns were fired from the fort, but the Fencibles were withdrawn from the building, which played no further part in the invasion. Following the end of the Neoplonic Wars in 1815, Fishgard Fort fell into disrepair. It is now owned and maintained by the Pembrokeshire Coast National Park Authority. Well, that's close enough to what I wanted. It's coming through. Okay, come here then. I'm sure. Tiny legs. Oh gosh, I can't see it. And then there's the old fort. It's so pretty, I won't lie. And then, view. And they would have seen the French ships. Right, because it's the headland over there. Just past there. They would have seen them coming in. We'll circle it on the screen if we can. And they'd already dropped some off in a cove I think and they went up to Strumblehead um, but then they came around and the rest were gonna come off on the and you don't have to pay to go here or anything about that no. you can just walk it you can with most places in Wales really apart from some of the castles yeah. or if you are gonna come but with many Wales, of them buy a national trust yeah uh, mem membership and then you can go because uh, you can see the cannons here on the lake district do a lot of national and then there's the other one which is in the town centre on the roundabout. Um, okay. I'm alive. Just like stopping and taking like pictures all the time. This one on the side there. I forgot to see if the right side was. I don't think it was. If so. Doesn't matter. We'll see what comes out. Take one on the way back up if you need to. She just ran on my head. That's what I just said. Mm -hmm. I have seen seals down here before now. Yeah, those years. Oh, that seagull, I think. Got on head, so let's go. Don't drop the phone, don't drop the phone, don't drop the phone. That is a very fat beard.
were sold at the quayside and measures locally called da -da 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 -da. 18th century thriving export trade to Ireland, Bristol and even Mediterranean. Fishguard herons found their way, packed panniers on horseback, markets of herons put um, to Shrewsbury. Some were salted and known as white herons, others were dried in smoke and known as red herons. Fresh herons too were sold in the streets of Fishguard and around the local villages, always to the cry, Scar down up Yeah, and we've had two films done here. One was the film version of Dylan Thomas's Under Milkwood, and that was done down in Lower Town. And then we also had Moby Dick. Read it. Good. On February 22nd, 1797, four French ships of the war dropped anchor under Carrig. Bastard, sorry. Bastard. <laughs> Rocky headland, two miles west of Fishguard, Britain was at war with revolutionary France, and the invasion so long predicted had become a reality. On board the vessels were 600 regular soldiers, plus about 800 convicts, styled the Black Legion. They were led by the Irish American adventurer Colonel William Tate. The 1,400 men scrambled ashore carrying barrels of gunpowder and boxes of hand grenades. Tate made his headquarters at Trehovel Farm and planned the next move, the capture of Fishka to allow reinforcements to be landed. Are you really doing the off Hurriedly, the local militia assembled a defence force. Thomas Knox, commander of the Fishguard Fencibles, gathered his men at Fishguard Fort, while a yeomanry force under the command of Lord Cowder of Stackpole caught match the next day from Halfford West. With the Fishguard Frenchables, the whole defending army, totaled 750 men. Meanwhile, Tate failed to follow up his initial advantage, partly because his troops, drunk on looted wine, had become impossible to control. Sorry, that just sounds like something that happened. <laughs> French soldiers wandered the countryside in search of loot and came off badly from encounters with country people armed with scythes and found in pieces. At Prestgan, a drunken Frenchman here in a click through a musket being loaded shot a neat hole in a long case clock and the clock still works to this day. And it's I've actually gone to see it. It's in the gone to see it. Roy Luck. Is it? Yeah. I've seen it, I don't remember where it was. <laughs> Gra gravely overestimating the size of forces ranged against him, legend has it that Oof, his spies mistook there. women in traditional West Coast Coast costume, Welsh costume for with, soldiers, um, and, with, and with his troops in disarray, he yeah, headland into Calder, the, or Calder. Yeah. the unconditional the surrender was signed in Royal Oak in Fishguard Square, and the French troops laid down their muskets on Woodick Sands. The official casualty list showed four Frenchmen killed and two Welshmen. The invasion had lasted just three days. Different, yeah, but the dress is nearly place. almost the same. I hope you can hear us over the dress. And then that is the, the women of Fishguard. Yeah, so women are not smart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've got that. We can insert a photo here of my cousin. Um, dressed as Jemima Nicholas with her grandchildren. 
and then a drawing that I did of a picture that I found online but lost. <laughs> Actually, yeah. I don't think it was a picture online, I think it was one of our old pictures that I can't find anymore. Yeah. During this video, we have hidden some stones that you'll have seen us paint. We'll insert the footage. And the footage of us placing them somewhere, yeah. or pictures if there are people around. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll just go back to the car now. Okay, hope you my enjoyed. <laughs> my face. My... Hope you enjoyed that little walk and vlog sort of thing, and I read stone painting. And if you would like to subscribe, please do so down. What are you doing? We're oh, yeah, we're... <laughs> okay, should we redo that one? Okay. Nope. <laughs> no. So please subscribe by there. No. And please if like. Let's remember. By there. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Crafty Leaks. Bye. Oh, and Bye. happy St. David's Day. Happy St. David's Day. Do you spoil Dowie? Yes, he did. <laughs>